Well, what do you know about that? Okay. <laughs> so we will do the step two, step three coming right up. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're almost done with the the Mayans. Uh, they've deserved uh, a, a, our extra attention for sure. Um, so, uh, so many innovations, um, and I'm just gonna finish off uh, 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 by just refreshing our memory about who Adzamna was. He was their sky god. Their sky god. And um, uh, the creator uh, deity. Uh, but I think if you've watched my previous um, lectures, you know I've struggled with the, the Mayan pantheon. I just can't, can't get any coherence uh, out of it. But this guy is, is a big guy and, and uh, um, uh, recurs uh, over and over again. And uh, this time he is the God of uh, also of many things, the calendar. And that's what I'm going to uh, talk about now. He inspired the Maya to do these calendars that are on a 52 year cycle. Uh, 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 last week we talked about the Chinese have a 60 year cycle. And I think that's interesting because that might be the life expectancy of somebody who uh, made it past the age of five. Um, and this calendar is very sophisticated. <laughs> it takes batches, huge blocks of time. And their calendar uh, started in uh, 3000 uh, B BCE. Um, and they uh, uh, kept track of the lunar phase, that 19 year cycle that we, we talked about. Um, and the moon was important to them because they believed that uh, there were nine lords of the night and they had uh, uh, nine phases of the calendar, uh, uh, one for each uh, uh, lord. And it's this whole business about uh, the struggle at night for the sun to get back uh, to the eastern horizon after it drops uh, in the west. And we saw that the Egyptians had that uh, 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 trouble too, dealing with uh, that concept. Um, and um, the uh, sun god, uh, we'll learn later, is really important because that's the, uh, one of the main gods of the, of the Aztecs. Um, so uh, the Maya long count gave us information on the moon, uh, and we know from the uh, last time we looked at uh, what the Anasazi astronomers had achieved at Chaco Can uh, Canyon, keeping track of the 19-year uh, uh, cycle. And we learned that this is how they did it at, at, at Chaco Canyon, um, allowing uh, 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 the... Um, uh, light to uh, come through a, a, a opening between uh, two rocks. Um, and that's all uh, outlined in the uh, last talk. Uh, so this is just a review. And why is it 19 years? This isn't uh, what really happened, but this is from their standpoint, looking out from the earth of what they think is happening. And they think that the, the sun and moon are going around them. And the 19 year cycle is the next time the sun and the moon are exactly in this relationship to each other while the earth is tilted the same, exactly the same way. So there's three variables that have to come together and they only come together um, in, in a, a 19 year uh, cycle. So uh, the Lords of the uh, 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 night, and here they are uh, depicted, um, the, just hopeless uh, detail, hard to uh, appreciate in, in the, uh, a big picture, but if you'd, uh, you could spend an hour on each one of these uh, nine blocks. Um, 
And they, as I said, batched uh, uh, large amounts of time. And that led to the misinterpretation uh, that the Mesoamerican long calendar uh, was going to come to an end uh, on December 21st, 2012. Some of us remember that. Um, we weren't too uh, worried, but there were a lot of people uh, who, who were. And it turned out when you, you studied uh, their complex calendar, that was nearly uh, when the calendar went to the next Bach tune. Um, and so the, uh, uh, the Bach tunes, there's a measurement within a pick tune, and the pick tune is going <laughs> to go into another pick tune in uh, uh, the year four, uh, uh, 4772. That, th th this uh, uh, boggles the mind. And it led to a, a, um, a, a question, what if um, an explorer from an Italian city-state, say Genoa, uh, had this come upon the New World and met uh, a... Um, uh, astronomer from a Mayan city-state, like Tikal or, or a Palenque. Uh, the encounter between the old and the new world might have been more felicitous than what, what we saw um, uh, is going to happen uh, in uh, 1492 and then uh, more uh, cataclysmic when uh, Cortez lands in Mexico in 1519. Um, for my audience, I thought I would uh, spend just a second on an article I stumbled on. There, there, was, there is some evidence that there were uh, powerful Mayan kings who ruled in their own right, not simply um, inheriting the power from uh, a husband. Um, this is uh, uh, Lady uh, Cabal. Uh, she's got the, the Mayan uh, headdress, but aspects of her that are uh, 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 clearly uh, female. Uh, uh, we'd have to study that. That would take too much time. Uh, but uh, here is a, a, a statuary of the, the same lady. Um, they think, they think. Uh, and this is the archaeologist who is exploring uh, and putting together all this data. If you want more uh, information, you can Google uh, her. Um, and the, she has uh, discovered the Margarita uh, tomb in uh, Coban. Um, and this is uh, purportedly her, her, uh, uh, the queen's uh, husband, but somehow she came uh, to power and wound up uh, being honored in, in this uh, tomb. Um, uh, and uh, now we'll go back to uh, uh, Itzma and his role uh, also is the god of death um, that uh, is involved with uh, the ritual decapitation. And in the Mayan myth, um, uh, the Mayan uh, god of corn uh, was decapitated on the order of Itzna. Um, and uh, so that's a, a kind of where we get into this whole human sacrifice thing. We talked about when we uh, uh, did the uh, uh, Olmecs that there was already a tradition uh, uh, that involved all of these things, even heart removal. Um, but but uh, uh, we uh, uh, don't have, didn't have much detail about the Olmecs uh, uh, doing that, just hinted at it. Um, but the Mayans uh, did do that, uh, absolutely. And it's, it, it's documented. They took the next step and um, uh, prisoners of war were sacrificed to uh, the Mayan uh, king, and here you 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 see a, um, a prisoner being being bought for um, uh, disposal, um, and in the, the, the Mayan uh, 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 classic period, there was uh, 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 depictions of of human sacrifice on on this vessel, 
Um, then uh, uh, also uh, in uh, their hieroglyphic uh, uh, depiction of the uh, heart being uh, extracted. So uh, they did start this uh, uh, tradition. And this is, uh, depicts the, the uh, uh, god of corn being uh, uh, first free, but then captured um, and um, uh, uh, then uh, the reenactment uh, uh, was uh, carried out within the Mayan civilization uh, with a, a human uh, sacrifice. They also uh, had some kind of uh, 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 torturous death besides decapitation and involved uh, the uh, arrows, shooting arrows, um, and uh, not good. Animals were uh, also uh, involved in some uh, sacrifices, but we know um, from the uh, uh, findings in the cenote in Chichen Itza that there were uh, human uh, sacrifice, and it seemed to be predominantly um, uh, women that were sacrificed during times of drought, famine, or, or, or disease. <laughs> um, so now we leave the Mayans, uh, and they kind of dwindle off uh, to the south. The, the, the last political Mayan city to fall um, uh, uh, was uh, this city, um, and it happened in uh, 1697 uh, um, in Guatemala in a, a remote uh, uh, place. Um, and uh, we got, uh, now we move on um, uh, further uh, north, and we're, we're going to start with uh, the uh, Tia uh, Teotio uh, Wakanos. I'm just getting a little message here from Ico. I have to take a look at. Sorry. Um, uh, so um, the um, uh, Teotio Wakanos, uh, their society uh, takes off uh, here near uh, where the, the modern city we know as Ver Veracruz. Um, and I'm not going to say much about them. Uh, we, we've got a lot of territory still to cover, but this is uh, our brief timeline just to refresh you. Uh, the Mayan civilization was quite early, uh, remember. 1200 to 400 uh, uh, B BCE. Uh, we talked briefly about the Zapotec. And then here's the, the, the Mayans overlap uh, with the uh, Olmecs. Um, and um, the uh, Teotihuacanos overlap uh, with the Mayans. So uh, gradually we're, we're moving forward in history. Um, and we know that the Mayans uh, hang on uh, until around uh, uh, after 1600, uh, but in, in a much reduced uh, uh, form, uh, the Teotihuacanos are, are much briefer. They, they burn out uh, pretty quickly, which is why I'm not going to uh, spend uh, much time talking about them. Um, but they were an aggressive culture. Uh, they uh, dabbled in Mayan uh, politics. Uh, they were in a position of, of strength uh, uh, militarily. And th this is uh, their famous uh, pyramids to the sun and the moon. Uh, and you can see that the, the, uh, their uh, uh, ceremonial center certainly qualifies as a civilization, certainly qualifies as a civilization. Pyramid of the sun, uh, the moon, and where were they? They, uh, on the map, uh, this uh, uh, gives us a triangle that I want to spend some time on. This is uh, uh, Teotihuacan uh, over here. This is uh, the, the strategic uh, lake district that we'll spend a lot of time uh, talking about. 
Um, eventually, the, the Aztecs are going to come from the north and they're going to populate and uh, serve as mercenaries to various uh, city states around this lake. But eventually, the Aztecs take over this whole uh, maritime uh, uh, culture. But there's a, a, another point in this triangle, the northern point, and that's uh, Tula. And that is the home base of a new tribe coming down from the north. And this is a, a, a repetition of a theme that we've had over and over again in the new world a new warlock-like tribe coming in from the north. Um, in uh, Asia, it was uh, uh, the steppes uh, when they came south. Um, in Europe, it was the, the steppe people when they headed uh, uh, west. Um, and it was the, the Germanic uh, uh, tribes uh, coming from the north to south. And then finally, the wave of um, the Vikings uh, so uh, here we have in the New World the same uh, phenomenon. It makes you wonder about uh, climate and weather and why North is uh, the, the direction from which um, uh, in, uh, aggressiveness uh, comes. Um, and they're not going to be the last. They're, uh, they're paving the way uh, for the uh, Aztecs. So let's spend some time on uh, uh, the Toltecs. Um, and th the fact that they're both uh, militaristic um, and uh, the Aztecs uh, in the extremity, um, uh, when the Europeans arrived, they Aztecs were so hated uh, because of their, their uh, 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 militaristic, uh, 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 dictatorial uh, uh, cruelness that other uh, societies that they conquered welcomed the Spaniards as um, uh, possibly better than the Aztecs. Um, and the Spaniards, on their hand, they thought that the Aztecs were the culmination of Mesoamerican civilization. But to uh, quote uh, something I read, in fact, the Aztecs were just a militarized afterglow of the Mesoamerican civilization that had reached uh, 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 other high moments, um, in particularly astronomy and their and the calendar, advanced uh, 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 civilizations. Um, and the, the uh, Aztecs were a pale re, uh, reflection of that. They hadn't introduced really anything new. It was just an afterglow of what we've been studying uh, for the last uh, month, starting with the, the Olmecs and, and going through um, the, the Mayans. Um, so the Toltecs, um, uh, they had their own uh, version of the pyramids. Um, the uh, 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 they also um, used the, the jaguar in an um, uh, aggressive militaristic way, as we saw the Olmecs, in, in fact, did and passed that on. So the, the theme of continuity, uh, continuity, we find uh, certain themes that just run uh, through all of Mesoamerican um, uh, culture. And um, uh, the, uh, they're feasting on human hearts here. So this is another unfortunate uh, uh, continuity. Um, they, you'll remember it started off uh, with the Olmecs uh, believing the creation myth that the, the gods had sacrificed their blood to create human beings. And it was only fair uh, that uh, we uh, compensate uh, uh, the gods. For, for the sacrifice they made uh, with some small uh, payback, uh, but uh, an unfortunate uh, belief. Um, the Toltec uh, warriors uh, reflecting their militaristic uh, um, uh, attitude. Um, and this is an interesting uh, hero. Um, and he uh, was there, uh, George Washington. 
Uh, they, they looked up to him uh, as being the founder of, of the, the, the Toltec uh, civilization. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce all, all these names because I'll, I'll just butcher it. Uh, what you're imagining the pronunciation is, is better than what I could do. Um, and uh, he was a, a priest uh, to uh, the god Quetzalcoatl. So there was no separation of uh, church and state. He was uh, uh, the head, the, the religious leader and um, the uh, 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 leader of the state, um, secular leader. And, and so we see this in a lot of civilizations. Uh, and it, it, he was a priest to a, a god, Quetzalcoatl, um, uh, who, who was uh, uh, the, the chief god. Um, now, he uh, had a tragic ending. Uh, he wound up in exile. He lost his uh, uh, power, but he, he promised uh, to return. And in Toltec mythology, that story is conflated be, uh, uh, between uh, the, the leader, Talpitzin, and Quetzalcoatl. They, they merge. They become one um, uh, entity in, in the legend, which uh, 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 was confusing to me uh, at first. Um, but he, he left. He said, "I shall return uh, at the uh, when the calendar goes into its next cycle," uh, reflecting that they were using the same approach to time that, that the Mayans were continuity. And again, we see um, uh, the feathers and, and the serpent. That's been a, a theme we've seen um, from the uh, Olmecs. Starting, remember, we saw that cave painting with the. Uh, feathers and the serpents. So the, the continuity, the connections uh, are, are fascinating. So uh, uh, they uh, were the ones who eventually uh, conquer Chichen Itza in the year uh, 1000. But here's what I want to spend a little bit of time on. They uh, traded for turquoise. Um, and uh, the, the uh, evidence points to trade with Chaco Canyon, that same place that developed the spiral that kept track of the 19 cycles uh, of, of the moon. And uh, Chaco Canyon and the Toltecs both collapse around, around the same time. But here's the thing, they also tr uh, uh, traded uh, apparently through the uh, extrapolation of the evidence that we have with uh, the, the Mississippi mound uh, uh, cultures. Um, and there's one aspect of uh, Topilson's uh, uh, legend uh, it, that he uh, uh, disappeared on the uh, Eastern horizon out into the sea to the east, uh, and that's why, and, and that's the direction he, he uh, left, and the direction from which he promised to come back, which fit uh, just perfectly with with uh, Cortez. But the other question I have is, if he went to the east, does that reflect something in Toltec culture about going? Uh, to the east, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. But let's let's finish uh, turquoise and Chaco Canyon. So here's Chaco Canyon. Uh, this is the cliffside where those those boulders uh, rested to catch the uh, the light uh, uh, at night on the spiral and during the day for the solstices. Um, so they had some astronomy there, and you can see. Um, all the rooms that Chaco Canyon had. When we went there, we were told that uh, Chaco Canyon was the, the site that, uh, you, where you could document the most rooms in one building until uh, some apartment complex went up in, in um, Harlem in New York. Um, so that's a fascinating uh, factoid. Um, 
And here, uh, this uh, may have, have been a ball field, so a continuity uh, with the Mesoamerican culture, that certainly is one thing we've seen over and over again. Um, and so where's Chaco Canyon? It's, it's up here. It's in uh, uh, northern uh, uh, New Mexico. Um, but the, there are other sites that I, I want to talk about um, that involve uh, the uh, Anasazi uh, people. So we can start talking about Anasazis uh, as being the native uh, peoples in, in uh, the, the uh, North American uh, cultures. Um, and they were uh, receptors of uh, some civilization and some continuity uh, from uh, Mesoamerica. Uh, and I want to talk about that. But Arizona specifically, let me just ask the question. I'll give you a, a second to think if you see if you know the answer. What mineral is found in abundance in Arizona? Even to this day, even to this day, um, and therefore, what precious stone is also found uh, in, in Arizona? And, Your and, voice. <laughs> and my, good. My clue is Cyprus, because uh, uh, Cyprus uh, is uh, uh, interesting. Uh, the, uh, the name for Cyprus, um, you think, oh, uh, uh, Cyprus is named for copper. No, it's the other way around. Uh, there was so much copper on uh, Cyprus that when they found it, they they uh, they called it Cyprus. <laughs> so the Cyprus was a known inhabited island first, and then uh, when uh, the uh, uh, Middle Age uh, started, um, the uh, uh, Bronze Age. Uh, and they found out how to, how to work and, and, and do uh, the, the compounds. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, they actually named uh, uh, the new mineral that they could work with after the island, uh, uh, Cyprus, and that's copper. Uh, and so in uh, the uh, uh, Mesoamerica, uh, they, the main use of uh, the alloys of copper were sacred and symbolic and uh, decorative. Uh, they weren't used uh, uh, for, for weapons. The metallurgy came relatively late uh, to Mesoamerica. Um, so they, they left the Stone Age uh, uh, rather late. Um, and the... Uh, 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 the uh, technology may have come from uh, Peru to Western uh, uh, Mexico. So um, uh, the, the precious stone uh, is turquoise, which is a phosphate of copper and uh, aluminum. Uh, it's not so valuable anymore because you, you, uh, you can synthesize it. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's you see turquoise everywhere now, but but it was rare for a long period of time and used as uh, as, a, as a luxury item uh, and a, and could be uh, used in a, 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 as a sacred uh, item. And it uh, it's not, of course, ju in, in just in the New World uh, there were uh, there was turquoise in all these. Uh, other uh, societies uh, as, as well. Um, and this is what it looks like when it's mined. You would see that that would get your attention. Uh, uh, and, and you'd think maybe that was a gift from the gods. Um, and then you start working with it and fashioning it. Um, and um, uh, obviously, you get all this uh, uh, jewelry uh, that we see on bolo ties and uh, uh, everywhere else. And it made it uh, uh, all the way to South America. Uh, this is uh, the mochi uh, uh, culture, uh, uh, combining the, the turquoise and, and gold. 
Um, and this is uh, uh, a, a famous uh, Aztec mask. And then th this is the kind of uh, uh, huge uh, deposits that you can find in, in uh, the, uh, the north, uh, even in, in northern Mexico uh, and in Arizona, uh, where there are huge copper uh, uh, deposits, uh, which are being mined even, even today. Um, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about Arizona, therefore. Um, and I, 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 I want to take a, a little uh, tangent and uh, talk about the Anasazi in northern uh, Arizona, um, uh, because there's evidence that the, the uh, Mesoamerican civilization uh, influenced um, uh, 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 various Anasazi communities all the way uh, north of this uh, crater here. Um, and uh, we were interested in this because uh, this is where Iko and I spent two years um, at uh, the Indian Health Service uh, in Tuba City. Um, uh, and it's right on the border between uh, the Navajo Reservation and the Hopi uh, Reservation. Uh, the Hopi Reservation ex uh, extends along these mesas uh, here, uh, first, second, and, and third mesa, and then Moenkopi, which is uh, like a fourth mesa, was right outside of, uh, uh, of Tuba City. Um, we were well positioned here for uh, uh, recreation with uh, uh, Eisenhower Dam, uh, Boulder Dam, uh, Glen Canyon Dam being uh, um, uh, placed here, damming uh, the Colorado uh, River. Um, the, the Colorado River, of course, runs through the Grand Canyon, but there's also a little Colorado River uh, with much less running now since, since the dam uh, was, was built. The, um, so 75 miles to Page and uh, 75 miles really to the Grand Canyon, to Flagstaff, um, all along the Hopi mesas, and then to the uh, Northeast Monument Valley, where all those great westerns uh, uh, were made, um, John Ford uh, westerns. Um, uh, so uh, we really enjoyed our, our, our two years there. Um, but I uh, uh, want to uh, also be coming back to this area south of uh, Flagstaff, where there were quite a few um, uh, uh, ruins that re reflect uh, um, the uh, influence of uh, Mesoamerica. Um, and around Tuba City itself, um, we were reminded constantly of the, uh, we were on uh, the Anasazi uh, homeland, uh, the petroglyphs uh, were, were everywhere and, and fun to discover on a, on a hike. Um, but the one place I want to uh, hone in on is uh, Wupatki uh, National Monument. So this uh, civilization goes back to 500 CE. So the, 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 the time of the classical Mayans, at the same time, the Anasazi are, have a civilization that shows already at 500 C, uh, CE um, that they've, they've had contact with Meso uh, uh, America. And where is it located? Well, the landmark uh, here is going to be a, a volcano. Um, and so uh, just remember that Wupaki is north of, of the volcano. And it's important because that uh, volcano erupted in 1083, uh, uh, after Wupatki had been going for 500 years. Um, so just bear that, the be basic geological uh, fact in mind. And here you're, we're at Wupatki and you, you look north and, oh, there's an innocuous mountain. That's interesting. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, looking up uh, at the, the, the sunset crater, which was a huge volcano that erupted within the last thousand years. Um, 
And uh, at one point, um, satellite images following uh, this crater did see smoke coming up, and they, there was a false report that, the, that it was reactivating. It turned out that it was a wildfire. Um, that was 2015. So Wupatki uh, had 100 rooms, uh, but after the volcano erupted, um, the, the population uh, dwindled. Um, but the, this is what's left of the outline of some of the structures. Nothing as grand as uh, Chaco Canyon, but they had a, a ball field. Um, so a continuity uh, with uh, 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 Mesoamerica. This is the, uh, the more, most northern ball court uh, found by, by archaeologists at Wupatki. Um, so uh, also in uh, northern uh, Arizona was uh, Batatic and even further north than uh, uh, Wupatki, but it's, it wasn't as old as uh, Wupatki. Um, it, it, it was built uh, around uh, 1000 and abandoned in uh, around 1250. Uh, and you can see from it, it's, it's kind of a light version of uh, Mesa Verde. The, the best preserved uh, cliff dwelling of the Anasazi um, in, in uh, uh, North America and Southern uh, Colorado. But this is Wupatki, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Batatican from, from a, a distance uh, and closer up, uh, you, you had these uh, 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 ruins. This is a, new, uh, a companion ruin, the, the next, uh, um, uh, uh, canyon over. Um, uh, also had a uh, hundred uh, uh, rooms. And the next picture of what it looked like a uh, uh, hundred years ago, before it had uh, been uh, 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 developed or refurbished um, and, and, and presented by the Navajo tribe, actually, as, as a tourist uh, site. So this is. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, A Navajo guide. It's not the one we had the day that, that we visited this place, but I want to uh, just tell you we were uh, nosing around in these uh, ruins and uh, I casually asked the guide, so why did they leave? This looked like a pretty uh, nice place. It wasn't the drought. And the, uh, the Navajo guide was a particularly irritable mood that day. And he said, I don't know why everybody always asks about the drought. It, I don't think it was the drought. I, I think it was uh, ideological. I think there was uh, a charismatic religious leader uh, that came along, uh, a prophet, and that took these people over to the Pueblos. And this is when the Pueblos uh, were, were founded. You had Martin Luther. Why, can, why can't we have our own religious leader that motivates people to, to, to do things? Uh, it, there, there are other factors besides water. And so I was uh, well reprimanded. Um, and of course, this is uh, Taos, uh, which is uh, where our uh, guides uh, 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 said that the, the Anasazi people uh, wound up following um, a religious uh, leader, one of many Pueblos, but probably the first and one of the best preserved um, uh, Pueblos. Um, and uh, one last thing about the ruins in uh, Batatic, and we, we saw some petroglyphs on the wall. And when we were there, we were told one of the petroglyphs represented um, uh, the bear clan. Now, this isn't that particular one, but it was very much uh, uh, like it. It's the only one I could find uh, from Bat uh, Batatic and that was posted. So, um, the Bear Clan, and the Bear Clan, it was the first clan of the Hopi. And we know about it because um, uh, the couple that we met, the mixed couple, he was Navajo, she was Hopi, both matrilineal, you'll remember. Um, uh, she was a, a, a member of the Bear Clan, the very first uh, clan uh, uh, established in First Mesa, uh, an old Oribe, which is said to be the longest uh, continuously in, inhabited 
uh, a village in uh, North America. Uh, I think St. Augustine is second. Uh, and she was a member of, of the Bear Clan. Uh, and uh, the last time when we were doing corn, I shared with you that Iko and I had been invited by her to uh, attend a, a, a corn dance, which was special because it was down uh, in a kiva. Um, so uh, the Hopis uh, may be the um, uh, uh, southern branch of the Anasazi. Surely some, uh, most went to the Pueblos, but the Hopis uh, believe that they are a, um, a southern branch of the Anasazi that continue. And in doing my research for today's talk, I discovered uh, there, there, there were uh, Hopi code talkers. Um, we know there were Navajo uh, code talkers in World War II to baffle the uh, Japanese because neither language was written and there was no way that they were going to be able to uh, break uh, the code. So you put a Navajo uh, or a Hopi on one island and they talk on the radio to the other island and uh, the, the Japanese can never figure out what the plan was. Um, so um, uh, just moving a little bit south of Wupatki now, um, uh, we go, uh, our, the home base some of you will know is Sedona. So the, uh, Sedona is up, up, up here, south of Flagstaff. And um, there's many uh, different monuments here and many different ruins. The one that I'm just going to focus on in the interest of time is uh, Montezuma uh, uh, Castle um, down, down here. Uh, so this is uh, Montezuma Castle and associated Lake Montezuma. So there were some really oases that were uh, uh, able uh, to sustain um, a, a civilization, if you will. Um, uh, if you can build a ball court, I'm going to say that you're, you're a civilization. Uh, and this is a view from inside Montezuma uh, uh, Castle, a nearby uh, dwelling. Um, and then the water, uh, there, were, uh, there was evidence of uh, canals um, and uh, uh, the, the use of uh, water, this, you can visit that. Uh, so the Toltec trade uh, was to the north and west, but what about the northeast? You remember I said that their charismatic leader of the Toltecs, the one that went into ex uh, exile, disappeared uh, uh, to the uh, Eastern Sea, the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Well, that's interesting um, because uh, across from where the Toltecs were here, this is the Gulf of Mexico, how hard would it be to uh, uh, either follow the shoreline uh, north um, to the outlet of uh, the Mississippi uh, River? So uh, on this map, Veracruz would be about here, and the outlet of the Mississippi River is here. Huh, that's interesting because there are um, uh, evidence of civilization along the Mississippi uh, River. Uh, Iko and I were astounded um, uh, 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 driving down the Mississippi to encounter uh, the mound builders that we had never heard of. Um, th there is evidence that there was uh, uh, ritual killing, human sacrifice uh, of servants and wives. Uh, was that uh, the Toltec influence? Um, maybe it was even before the Mayan influence. So um, th this is a map of uh, the, the different uh, 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 mounds and mound builders. Um, and uh, there's uh, a couple in, in particular, uh, Cahokia. Cahokia is here. Um, a familiar name is Shiloh from the Civil War, but uh, the, I'm gonna focus on uh, uh, Cahokia, who's part of the middle Mississippian. You can see there's all these different classifications of Mississippian uh, culture that uh, had to have had some contact 
Um, and here you'll see that Cahokia and another uh, Mississippi uh, Native American culture, Poverty Point, are uh, designated as the uh, among the 24 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. World Heritage Sites right along the Mississippi, and uh, I'd never heard of them. How could that be? And um, also uh, World uh, Heritage Sites are Chaco Canyon, um, uh, Mesa Verde, and the Taos Pueblo. So if you add up uh, the two Mississippians and the, and the three Anasazi, that gives you uh, five um, uh, UNESCO uh, Native American sites. But when you look at the, the whole map, um, who built uh, uh, eight uh, structures that fall into UNESCO World Heritage Sites? I'll give you uh, five seconds to ponder that, um, but uh, your five seconds are up and it's Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright uh, uh, is recognized by UNESCO for uh, 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 a third of all the UNESCO uh, heritage sites uh, in, in the country. The closest one to us is Hollyhock, more about that in a second. There's a Taliesin uh, West. There's a, the original Taliesin in uh, Wisconsin that we, we visited. There are two more uh, structures uh, uh, around Lake Michigan. Um, uh, he also built uh, falling uh, water in, in uh, uh, Pennsylvania and, of course, uh, uh, the, the Guggenheim. Um, so these are the uh, eight uh, UNESCO uh, 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 structures that are credited to Frank Lloyd Wright. I know I'm on a, a tangent of a tangent here, but uh, 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 it's in uh, important to make these connections. This is in LA, Hollyhock, huh? Never heard of it. And here is where it's located. I uh, uh, Google mapped it uh, and it's in the Barnsdale uh, Art Park, uh, which isn't that far from the Griffith, Griffith Observatory, um, uh, sort of in the middle of things, flanked by Dodger Stadium, uh, the Hollywood um, Universal Studio. This is the five, so it's not it's not that hard uh, to to get to Hollyhock. So uh, uh, there you are. Now. Back to uh, Cahokia, that's our topic in, in the Frank Lloyd Wright tangent. Uh, let's get back to Poverty Point. This is a, a, an artist's uh, a conception of um, uh, what Poverty Point uh, looked like on the lower uh, Mississippi, the mound builders. Uh, 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 quite a development worthy of uh, UNESCO uh, and here's Cahokia near St. Louis. I think uh, one of us has been there even, not me, but one of us. Um, and um, uh, this was what it looked like, uh, quite sophisticated and it supported 30,000 people by any definition, uh, a civilization. Um, and so uh, the mound builders, uh, does this reflect Toltec influence? Maybe, maybe even Mayan influence. Um, uh, the the uh, uh, mounds that they built, um, and this is a, a kind of somewhat fanciful um, uh, rendition of what one artist conceived uh, from the descriptions to have been the original mound. There's uh, mound cities as far uh, north as Ohio. And then you get to the uh, artifacts that have been discovered. Birdman uh, in Monk's Mound. Huh, we've certainly seen uh, Quetzalcoatl and, and uh, 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 Birdman um, uh, influences. And look at these copper plates. Oh my goodness, found in Mississippi. Um, uh, 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 it could be even Mayan, uh, even Mayan. Um, and then the, 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 some evidence that they were astronomers um, uh, 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 around Cahokia uh, as, as well. 
wood hinge, not stone hinge. Um, so back to central Mexico, and I see uh, that I only have a few minutes. So you know what I think I'm going to do is, uh, I thought I'd get to the Aztecs, but I'm, uh, I think this is a, a good place to stop. We've got um, a very interesting medical conference on uh, the Delta virus. Uh, and so uh, I'll just end by pointing out, these are the, uh, again, the map we've seen before, the, the cumulative, all these civilizations did not exist at once, um, but we, we, we started with the Olmecs here, we expanded to the Mayans, now uh, we've gone up to the, the Toltecs uh, here, this uh, little green splash. And now we're gonna uh, uh, start uh, the Aztecs who came down uh, from the North. They said uh, they'd been there before and had been exiled and now they were returning. Sound familiar? Uh, continuity, another uh, Toltec theme that they picked up on. And they, they came down from the north uh, as a, a fascist group, really, um, and uh, took over this, the, this whole area. And they were there uh, when Cortez uh, came, and they thought, oh, the Aztecs were the peak of Mesoamerican civilization. But uh, uh, to uh, quote the uh, article, they were only a militaristic uh, afterglow. Um, and so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on Aztec. I hope next week uh, we'll, we'll be able to uh, get to, to the, the, the final uh, one, uh, Incas. We've already uh, covered the uh, 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 Musicas, uh, where uh, Juan Jose um, uh, lives. Um, and Musicas, you remember, was the show and tell. Uh, that, that, that he uh, shared. So uh, now uh, I am going to stop sharing and uh, see if there's any questions before people have to leave. I think Irene is, I can't hear her. How about if I unmute myself? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm curious about the Wupatki and um, I, it, the Navajo are the most recent to come into that area around Grand Canyon. Is that right? Yeah, they they came they arrived in that area around uh, 500, uh, the same year that the um, uh, Spaniards arrived uh, uh, with the Coronado expedition. So the poor Hopis were getting pinched from the North and from the South at the same yeah. time, two totally different cultures. Yeah, sucks. Sucks <laughs> when you get pinched and you don't want to. <laughs> anyway, I got a reboot for the, the um, UCSF. So I'll see you all later. Thank you so much, John. Okay. Thank wow. you, John. Yeah. Another tour de force. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoyed it. Um, we'll we'll see you all uh, next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>